then I'm questioning what can she actually do. I kind of love it. It's like so bad it's good, you know what I mean? But why a four? I don't get it. You know my name, neon noir, neon noir, on my road to fame. I am happy, coming for your spot, neon noir, neon noir, now let me show you what I got. Hello, my beautiful life bride. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Neon Noir. I'm a half Italian, half Canadian drag queen, and I am the brightest crane in the box. Y'all, if you are new here, or if you haven't already done so, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Today, we are getting into a new season. That is right, Canada vs. The World is coming back for a second season. And the Meet the Queens just dropped. We got promo pictures, we got videos, and we're gonna get into it by playing my favorite game. That is right, it is time to play Fab or Drab, where we rate the looks and let you know which looks are fab and fabulous and which ones are drab and awful. And make sure to stay tuned all the way to the end, where I let you know who had my fab and drab of the week. And for the promo this year, the theme is wrestling. And I think this is a really fun theme because it is Canada versus the world. So to create a sort of like competition environment, such as wrestling, kind of fits. It was way better than that disco thing that they had last year. But but let's get into these looks to find out who shined bright and who faded into obscurity. First up, we have Alexis Mateo, and Alexis Mateo is coming back to us for the fourth time. That is right, she is almost competing as much as Juju B. We were first introduced to Miss Alexis Mateo on season three of the US edition. She then came back for All Stars 1, and then again for All Stars 5. So this is her first time competing on an international franchise. But let's get into this look. Alexis Mateo is coming in with this lime green and hot pink bodysuit. She then paired it with these gloves that got all of the fringe all over it, these thigh high boots, and this big wig. She decided to give you the full neon fantasy. I love a good neon, I love a good color, so I kind of love this really awful color combination. I like when colors clash and this is so clashing in the best way possible. The garment itself is a lot, but at the same time, do we really mind? Because at the end of the day, it's still a bodysuit. So she's kind of like hit the two things you shouldn't do on one. People say that for your promo look, you should go a little bit bigger, you should do a little bit more, and a bodysuit isn't really the way to do it. But then because she added all this stuff on top of it, I feel like it's not really a bodysuit. On top of it, the theme this year was wrestling, so I'm kind of into a bodysuit for wrestling. It makes sense. It's definitely giving me more of like that Mexican wrestling vibe, you know, that that more of that showmanship, a little bit more of that, that frill, a little bit more of like the outfit that you can never see people wrestling in unless they were doing it on TV, you know what I mean? As awful and over the top of it is, I kind of love it. It's like so bad it's good, you know what I mean? It's got everything going on and these color combinations just mixed together. And my name is Neon, so you know I love a good crazy color combination. All in all, I actually really enjoy this look. I think it hits the mark, it does the job, and it is definitely going to be a wow. Next up, it's Cheryl Hole, or should I just say Cheryl? That is right, she has changed her name. I don't know when this happened, but I was looking her up on Instagram, and on her promo picture, it just says Cheryl, and I was like, okay, let's get into it. The first time we saw her was on UK season one, and the second time we saw her was on UK versus the world season one. So this is also her first time competing internationally because she is a UK based queen. For the look, Cheryl is giving us this black, orange, and purple cat suit with this jacket and this big blonde hair. Again, this is yet another one who went more in that showmanship, sort of WrestleMania sort of vibes, which I'm kind of loving. I love the black with the purple together. I think that's, that's quite interesting. The mix of the orange in there is really cute. I think if it was just black and orange, it would feel a little bit Halloween. But once you mix the three together, it definitely has a vibe. She's got these sort of like flame things on her body, which I think really work. The part that kind of like throws me off and that I would probably change first up is the hair. This is a typical Cheryl hair, typical Cheryl wig. I don't necessarily know that this wig goes with this outfit. It really feels out of place because the outfit feels a little bit edgy, a little bit like I'm going to beat you and this hair feels like very Beyonce I'm singing at a concert. I feel like it probably should have used a darker edgier hair, maybe with like a weird cut bang, you know, just to like 
toughen up the whole look. The other thing that bothers me is her proportions. I don't know what she's doing, but she's feeling very boxy, and I don't know if that's because of the coat, or because she didn't cinch, or she didn't put really big breasts on. I wish she just would have had more of that hourglass figure. I think that that would have really helped take it up a notch, because when you get into these catsuit bodysuits, it really ends up being about the body, so you need to have the body to support it. That being said, it is not bad by any means of the imagination, and it's still gonna get a wow. Next up, we have Eureka, and this is also Eureka's fourth time competing. The first time we saw her was on USA Season 9, which she got injured and then came back for USA Season 10. We then saw her come back for a third time on All Stars 6. Since then, she's been doing a whole bunch of stuff with We're Here and is now back to compete for a fourth time time. So I will say that Eureka is definitely coming into this as one of the front runners. Not only has she competed multiple times, but she's had her own television show and therefore made quite a lot of money and more importantly, connections with a lot of designers. That being said, let's get into this look. She decided for this wrestling look to come out with this little bathing suit, but it is not the bathing suit that makes it, it is the muscles. That is right, for a wrestling theme, she decided to give you this full, big breasted, big muscle bodybuilding woman. She's definitely giving me China, you know, from the World Wrestling uh, Federation, as it used to be called back in the 90s. She's definitely giving you that woman that's gonna come beat you. The muscle suit does also give me reminiscence of what Milk did for the All Stars 3 promo, but at the end of the day, when Milk did it, it was shocking and it was weird and it was interesting, but it didn't really make sense. It was just a look for the sake of a look. When Eureka did it, she was like, you know what, even though I might be kind of stealing this idea. I'm gonna do it differently because I'm doing it with the big breasts and the, and still making it very womanly, but it makes sense with this theme being a wrestling theme. I think she really thought about this to the next level. Is it the most detailed-oriented look? No, but it's a wrestling look. It's never gonna be the most detail-oriented look. So the fact that she made this giant suit to go with it and then paired it with this tiny little bikini plays on that proportions. And the one thing that we know about Eureka is she knows how to proportionize. All in all, I love this concept. I love this idea. I think it is so original and it shows how you can take a simple outfit but just make it exceptional with a good concept. All in all, this is definitely going to be a oh. Next up, we have Kennedy Davenport, and this is Kennedy's third time competing. We first saw her on season seven, and then we saw her come back for All Stars 3. Most recently, if you're watching that Drag Race live show, you've seen her on that. And I will say, I wasn't super excited about Kennedy being on this cast. She was never one of those queens that really like got me excited until I saw her on the Vegas show. And when I saw her on the Vegas show, I got to know a little bit more of her personality and how fun, how quirky she can be. And I was like, oh my God, I hope she brings that side of her to this cast because that would be so much more fun than what we're used to seeing. But enough about that, let's get into this look. For this look, Kennedy decided to go with a cat suit as well. She decided to go with all the colors. We got pink, we got green, we got orange, we got blue, we got black. The show said, here's the color palette, and she said, yes, please, let me do all the colors. Now, I am not opposed to somebody taking all the crayons and coloring with them. I think that could be fun if it is done properly. The question is, is it done properly? And my answer is no. I don't think that this is particularly successful. It is is a cat suit like the other ones have uh, done as well but this one doesn't necessarily scream wrestling it just kind of screams these are the color combinations so i was really struggling to figure out where her reference points were from i don't see the, like the american wrestling i don't see the mexican wrestling in it it just feels like a outfit that Kennedy would want to wear and Kennedy would want to make. Does it look good on her body? Yes, it suits her body, but it doesn't suit the theme. The best thing about this outfit is the hair, which she's got this giant mohawk, which is super cool, super edgy. I wish she would have brought some of that energy into her body. Actually, speaking about this hair, this is the hair that I wish someone like Cheryl would have had on her look. If you take Cheryl's costume and you take Kennedy's wig, boom, that would have done it for me. This way, it is a little lack luster. And since this is a whole vibe, I don't think that I can really pass her with just this hair. All in all, there's a lot going on, but I don't necessarily feel if it's a theme and I don't necessarily feel like it is particularly inventive, new, or interesting. And that's why she is getting a drab. <laughs> Next up, we have Kahena, and if you're wondering who, well, you're not alone. Most people were probably thinking the same. 
This is like Hannah's second time competing. The first time we saw her was on Drag Race France season one, where she was the first out. So even if you watch Drag Race France, you would probably forget her. So I love that she's coming back with a little bit more of a vengeance. But let's get into this look. She decides to come out with this purple and green color combination. She's wearing purple ties with purple boots with a purple bodysuit, purple gloves, and green detailing all over. For somebody who's coming from an international season and was a first out, she had a lot to prove. And the question is, did she do it with this look? And my answer is, absolutely not. I felt like this was a very basic look overall and definitely did not show us what she can do. Or if it does show us what she can do, then I'm questioning what can she actually do. I find that this outfit was not wowed enough. It does not show me why you're bringing her back. There are so many queens that would have died for this opportunity, especially a first out queen. So I was expecting big things from her because she needs to swing for the fences and swings to the fences she did not. All in all, this is a very basic outfit that I could see a hundred queens wearing in the club not on a promo for Canada's Drag Race. I'm sorry, bitch, this is not enough, and you better step up your pussy if you want a chance to win at this show. All in all, if you didn't get, this is absolutely gonna be a drag. <laughs> Next up, we have Le Fil. And don't let the name confuse you because she's coming to us from UK. She competed one time before on UK season four. She decided to do an orange bodysuit with orange thigh high boots with this sort of really big shoulders and purple fringe all over it. She then paired it with a wrestling belt and wrestling knee pads and giant black hair. When I start to describe the look, I can definitely see all of her references. I can definitely see where she was going for it. And you can definitely see that she was trying to take this basic bodysuit and turn it into so much more. The thing is, is it successful? And to me, no, it's not. I don't know if it's the way she's posing in this. I don't know if it's the specific color combination, but it's just not reading really well. Everything on her body uh, looks really loose. So that's also not helping because when you think of wrestling, you think of like really tight, skimpy outfits and and maybe it's the way she's posing, but everything just isn't fitting right. On top of it, these knee pads really cut her off uh, at the knees, and she is not a very tall queen, so I really felt like she could have lost the knee pads. They don't really add much. Maybe if she wanted to do the knee pads, they had to be like fully rhinestone to merely make them a moment, but right now they're just like these black things on her knees. Then she's got the wrestling belt, which again, I appreciate the Valiant, but I feel like, oh, let's go wrestling, let's throw a belt on that to make it feel more wrestling. Again, not the best. If she did do that, I wish she would have went more in like a gold to really make that belt a moment. Uh, again, I feel like the black really stands out in not the best way. I love the shoulder pieces with the fringe coming out of it, and I love this big hair. It's definitely a vibe, but it definitely feels like two different costumes. From the shoulders up is one look, and from the shoulders down is another look, and they don't combine. All in all, this one was confusing to me, and that's why I'm gonna go ahead and give it a drab. <laughs> Next up, we have Lemon, and Lemon is coming to us for the third time. The first time we saw her was on Canada Season 1, then she came back for UK vs. The World Season 1, and now she is back on Canada vs. The World Season 2. Can I just say how excited I am to see Lemon? I was not one of those queens that was super excited about her on Season 1 of Canada's Drag Race, but she really took the internet by storm, and then by the time UK vs. The World came up, I started to see what everybody else was already seeing, and then she blew up since then because she is that bitch. I got to meet her while she was here and she's honestly a really nice person. So besides her being Canadian and besides me meeting her, I kind of have a soft spot for her. So I am definitely team Lemon. But let's get into this look. For the look, uh, Lemon decided to go with her signature yellow color. She decided to do a sort of a Mexican mucho libre drag aesthetic with a thigh high lace up boot, a mask with some pigtails coming off of it, and this bodysuit with this skirt on it. She definitely understood the assignment. First up, she stuck with her yellow, which is her signature color, and therefore branding bitch. Second of all, the addition of the mask and the way that the boots tie up definitely give you that feeling of being in a wrestling match without it being like too kitsch. When you look at the bodysuit itself, it works. It's got a lot of elements coming onto it. You can also imagine it without the mask and without these boots and she could probably get a lot of 
good uses out of this outfit, which I also really love because if you're gonna spend this kind of money, you better make it work for you, you know? But if we're gonna critique one or two little things, I think that the skirt that she wraps on top of the bodysuit is a little bit short. It feels like almost a decorative accessory more than a skirt. I actually don't mind the skirt. I think the plastic is really cool. I just wish it was a few inches longer to just make it feel a little bit more skirt-like. I don't even care that it's open. You know, it's just more of like, just the length. The other thing is it's feeling very yellow. I get the whole branding thing. I get that she wants to stick with it, but I wish there was a little bit more contrast in the outfit. I don't know if that was a little bit of a, a touch of blue or a touch of black here and there, just to make certain aspects pop. I'm more thinking it would be really cool on the mask because on the mask, they usually have these like really big shapes on them, almost like the shapes that we saw on Cheryl's outfit. I wish some of those would pop in in little colors. Even if she wanted to stick with the yellow, even if she did a white or a gold, I think that would have really helped just break it up a little. All in all though, those are really tiny little details and I don't have much to say. So it's definitely gonna be a no. Oh. Next up, we have Miss Fierce Delicious. And Miss Fierce Delicious, this is her second time competing. The first time we saw her was on Canada season three, but she is coming back with a vengeance. She was definitely a fan favorite because she brought the drama. So I'm excited to see her on this season uh, to see what she's gonna bring. But let's get into this look. For this look, Miss Fierce Delicious has decided to go with this pink bodysuit with the number four on her chest. She decided to do it with pink boots and this big pink jacket. She then paired it with long braided pigtails. I would say that I don't know if Fierce Delicious has ever seen wrestling because I don't know what this has to do with wrestling. When does wrestling have numbers? But also if we're gonna keep the number four, can somebody explain to me why four? If you know, let me know in the comments below because I'm confused. I would have expected to be a two for versus the world two or for her second time competing or maybe it could have been a three because she was on season three. But why a four? I don't get it. I think this would have been better had it been flames and not a number altogether. I feel like the number altogether just kind of makes it feel like a generic sports reference and not necessarily a wrestling reference. But I do like that she decided not to stick so literally to the theme and decided to make more of like a fashion interpretation of it because it makes the outfit more exciting. I just wish it was more connected to the theme, but that is just a detail. This jacket is definitely a moment and it really takes this basic bodysuit and brings it up a level. I love the braided pig Tails, it definitely makes it feel a little bit edgier uh, and definitely giving it more of a vibe. All of that being said, I love her interpretation of this. I love that she went in a different direction. I love the vibe she brought to this and I'm excited to see her on my screen and that is why she is getting a buff. Next up, we have Tainomi Banks. And Tainomi Banks, this is her second time competing. The first time she was competing was on Canada season one. But let's get into this look. Mama, this look. She is coming in full head to toe glitter gold bodysuit with all the muscles all over her. She is shining to the gods and she is showing her good. Uh, on top of this suit, she's got this flame bikini with these flame boots and this flame jacket. Now this is how you do a promo look. I feel like on her original season, she really didn't get a fair shot. So she decided, you know what? I'm gonna come back and show you what you were really missing and that she did. Take notes, Kahana, this is how you do it. I love everything about it. It fits the theme, but it makes it her own. She stands out from everyone, and that's what you wanna do when you do these promos, and she just looks stunning. All in all, I have no comments except to say brava, brava. If you hadn't guessed, this is 100% gonna be a ba 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 ba. And with nine queens, that is it for this episode. Now, what do you think? Personally, I would like to see a little bit more of international gals, but I discussed all of those details in another video where I leaked the cast a few months ago. So if you wanna hear my thoughts on the casting and their placements and this, that, whatever, go and watch that video. To sum it all up, I am really excited for this season and I hope they bring it. The most recent season in Canada was really good, so let's see if they can top it. But with these superstars, I think they can. But enough about that, let's find out who had my fabs and drabs of the week. Well, my drab of the week this week goes to Kahena. Girl, you're already a first out. Please don't be a first out again. Hopefully you can bring the goods, but this isn't it. But enough about the negative, let's get into the positive. Who had my fab of the week? Well, my fab of the week this week goes to Tainomi Banks. 
Honestly, this was super original. It stood out from everybody else. It fit the theme, but she did it in her own way. So it was like check, 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 and definitely the fab of the week. Woo! That is it for this week's episode, y'all. What did you think? Who are you excited to see? Let me know in the comments down below. I do read all of them and try to reply to most of them. And while you're there, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Girl, hit those buttons, especially if you want me to do the full season because there's like four seasons going on right now and I don't know which ones to choose because I can't do them all. So all your comments and likes will really make me prioritize this season. Okay, y'all, that is it for today. Once again, my name is Neon Noir, at Miss Neon Noir on all social platforms, and I'll see you in one of my next videos. Bye-bye.